Welcome to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz, a candid conversation as we learn about types of dementias, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, frontal temporal, and Lewy body, and the effects on the people we love. Jill's years of dedication and experience help you adapt, overcome obstacles, and find positive outcomes. It's time for Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Hello, everybody. Hey, I got to thinking this last week that we all have these kind of strange idiosyncrasies about ourselves and how they would affect us if we were to have Alzheimer's. So as I was teaching a class this last week, I asked the group, tell me something or a couple of things about yourself that you would need someone to know if you were to develop cognitive impairment or memory loss due to Alzheimer's, frontal temporal, whatever it is, um, Parkinson's disease and so forth, okay? And so I got to thinking, you know, what are my own? That's a good way to start with this group. So I came up with a few that might make you laugh, but I, um, I will take showers in the morning but I also like to take a bath at night. It helps me sleep and I relax. Now, the funny thing is, is not just any bath. I have to have things in a perfect scenario and sequence. So, for example, it has to be dark out. So if it's in the summertime, it's got to be around 930 or so. If it's in the wintertime, it could be around 7. But I always run my dishwasher or do a load of laundry or something on warm or hot uh, so I can heat up my my uh, boiler and get my uh, my water heater and get my water as hot as I can possibly get it. So I start there. Then when I go up to start to run my bath, I put in just hot water, as hot as I can get it on. And I put the little plug in and I've got a duck that has a thermometer. <laughs> And I like my little duck. It floats around and it tells me what the temperature is. So once all the hot water is run out, then I add cold water to get it to 112 degrees, which is perfect. Now, also, I won't take a bath without having bubbles. I need bubbles. And I don't mean Mr. Bubbles like for little kids or something. I like that Dr. Teal's because the bubbles last longer. And I'll put some of that in. Actually, too much, a lot of that in. So I have massive amounts of bubbles. (laughs) And then I turn on music. I have to have music on. So I've got a little stereo sitting there by my bubble bath. And I have all these candles that I purchased from Safeway. Uh, You all might know it as Kroger's or something around the country, around the world. I don't know, wherever your local grocery store is. And I uh, put batteries in these uh, electric candles and I put them all over my bath. Bathtub, and then I grab a glass of wine. So all is well with the world. If it's hot, I open a window just because I want that cold air blowing in because I'm so hot. And I have to have a towel right on the edge of the bathtub. So if I get Alzheimer's and you try to put me in a bath in daylight without bubbles, without candles, without music, I'm not getting in it. I'm going to say a firm no, and you're going to get what you perceive as a behavior. So that's just kind of an example of something that that could uh, happen. So as I was talking to these groups that I was giving a lecture to and a class to, I got some of the funniest things I thought I'd share with you that they said. So one lady said she brushes her teeth five times a day. Okay, she's got good dental health. We applaud her. But that's crazy. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> it's not really crazy. But I mean, if you're in a uh, memory unit, chances of you getting your br- your teeth brushed five times a day if it's not written in your care plan are zero to none. It's just not going to happen. There was another lady who said she has to have hot sauce on everything she eats. Everything. If it's a sandwich, if it's a salad, whatever. And literally, when we broke for lunch, she left the room and came back and got her bo- had her bottle of hot sauce with her and poured it all over her sandwich. <laughs> uh, several people said that they get up in the morning and don't do anything, anything until they have a cup of coffee. And those people mostly 
programmed the old-time coffee pots to have the coffee ready and percolating by the time they get up. And they like to hear the sound of the percolator. So I think that's kind of funny. You could do it. I, I don't know if you can time a Keurig or not, but I imagine you can. I couldn't imagine why you couldn't. But they won't do anything until they have a, a cup of coffee. Um, I had a lady that said she sleeps with ice, a bag of ice. There was a maintenance man that said he sleeps with a bag of ice. He has to be cold, right? So these are just some of them, and I'll have a few more for you in a few minutes. But it got me to thinking. So I um, – I, used to rock climb and uh, did really uh, technical rock climbing. And I fell a few times in my life and, uh, you know, hit my knee or hit my back or whatever. And then a couple of years ago at the walk to end Alzheimer's, I stepped in a hole and I broke my foot. Well, I walked on it for three days uh, before I went to the doctor because I had to set up that day for the 10,000 people who were coming. Then I had to sleep with my shoe on and come back the next day for the actual walk, that which, which was on a, on a Saturday, and walk all over the place. And then um, – I had to uh, just leave my shoe on again on Sunday, and on Monday when we put all the PVC pipe and everything back in the uh, in this in the storage unit, then I went to the doctor and they said you broke your foot. <laughs> I was walking on my foot with it broken. So because of that, um, by the way, this is a little ad for Even Up. I had a boot, and I had I didn't get an Even Up, one of those plastic things you can put on your feet, uh, the other foot to make you the same size. So my back got messed up. Now, my point of all this is that uh, I have back aches severely sometimes in my lower back, and my back will tighten up. So I have to lean over and touch my toes and hang like that for about 10 minutes just to stretch out my back. Now, if I get Alzheimer's and I get really jumpy with my legs being jumpy and I'm walking around and I'm just about to jump out of my skin or I'm leaning down trying to touch my toes and people will think I've I've literally just lost it, um, it may be because I need to stretch that lower back out because it also tightens up my hamstring. So if somebody doesn't know that, that could be a real problem for me if I have Alzheimer's. Because they would just think that I'm just walking around trying to pick things up off the carpet or something, not realizing I was leaning over like that to stretch out. Now, another thing, I go to bed every night and I have a glass of something to drink next to me on the bed. And sometimes I will put my arm underneath the pillow and because of that, I lay on the nerve right there in my bicep uh, that um, will put my arm to sleep. So I might wake up and start shaking my arm and all that kind of stuff. And if I have a roommate, they <laughs> what are they going to think? Or if I get out of bed and the nurse comes in wondering what I'm doing and I'm shaking my arms and I'm shaking my leg because everything's falling asleep and my lower back is hurting and I'm tightening up. But I can't express that. Can you see where this could become a huge problem? Right? So we all have these strange little things that we do. What is yours? Think about it for a minute. You probably better start thinking about writing these things down or expressing them to someone else because people are getting Alzheimer's younger and younger and younger. And these little things that we do, the way that we eat, the times that we eat, um, the the little uh, ways that we move about throughout our day, our timing for our day will come back. And I hate to say haunt us, but it comes back and is prevalent when you are in the late stage of Alzheimer's. And so we need to know what is going on with our folks when they're um, maybe leaning over or stretching out their arms or shaking a limb or looking for a glass of water at a certain time that doesn't seem quite right or, you know, things like that. So I found this absolutely fascinating that that people would um, have these strange idiosyncrasies. But boy, we had some we had some pretty good ones. I'm trying to think of a few others that were just off the wall. But the idea was that once we all finished talking, everybody had something that was uniquely their own that 
you have to share with the people you love. Because if you don't and something happens to you, maybe you get in a car accident, it could be anything, and you have a head injury and this stuff starts coming back for you, that could become a serious, serious problem when someone is trying to work with you and understand your unmet nonverbal needs. So these things happen all the time. But I'm trying to teach care communities around the world. And if you have a loved one that is in a community and the the place says they've got some just strange things that they do, they get up at a certain time in the morning or they come down and uh, want a snack in the middle of the night, maybe that was something they always did. Maybe it's not just a weird thing right? Maybe uh, they always like to exercise or they played piano at a certain time or, you know, whatever it is. So think about your own. Um, Think about what are those really kind of funny, strange things that you do. So just to get your think tank going again, I'll give you a couple more of mine. So uh, I like to play music more than I like to watch TV. So if I'm eating dinner or I'm fixing dinner, um, I play, I put music on. And when I get up in the morning, I also like to have music on. I don't just go and turn the TV on and start watching a TV show. So if somebody came in and just, um, I was listening to music and turned the TV on, that would infuriate me. (laughs) I would not be a happy camper. So these are things you need to know. What kind of... TV does do people like to watch. If I am watching TV, I'm watching sports. I'm watching a Rockies game. I'm watching a Bears or a Broncos game or something like that. Or I like the History Channel. I like uh, Home and Garden, HGTV and, and stuff like that. So these are just super, super, super important things. I've met people that absolutely shock me um, that will tell me that they don't ever watch TV. They don't ever listen to music. They don't have a favorite band. (laughs) Um, They may not have a pet. Um, You know, so these are, like I said, things that we do. We take our dogs for a walk. Uh, We play with our cats with a laser or something like that. Um, I like to go out and play Frisbee with my dog. So something that would be really important to me would be to have um, some kind of a a dog visit or something like that. You know, if, if somebody brings an animal in. But here's another one of those weird ones. Don't bring me a dirty dog. I don't want a dirty dog to pet. I don't. If you're going to bring a dog into a care community, make sure it's clean. These may sound like really, really silly things, but guess what, folks? They are not. Now, when we come back from our commercial break, I'm going to tell you some ways that you can record your little idiosyncrasies, the way that you can have some fun with it and just make sure that all is well with the world and everybody you know knows what your little quirks are. Because if you ever get in this state and you have not told someone, you're going to take a long time to adjust at a community. And I'll just one more example of that. The people that told me they have to have a cup of coffee, most communities get them up. They want to get them straight into the shower. They want to get them dressed and then take them down for breakfast. And you see how somebody that that maybe your mom or dad or husband or wife that you're moving into a community and the community doesn't know, they're going to be upset. They might be crying. They might hit someone. They might uh, have some type of a reaction to being forced to doing something that is out of sequence with what their body tells them is in tune. So think about that. Really, really think about that. And over the next few minutes, think about the kind of things you would like to write down or document in some way, shape, or form. Okay? We'll be right back. Hey, friends. I'm excited to tell you about Pine Grove Crossing Assisted Living and Memory Care in Parker, Colorado. They set the bar high for person-centered care. They're locally owned, and they focus on exceeding their residents' expectations while providing excellent dining, housekeeping, and transportation services. Their care team with licensed nurses are available 16 hours per day, seven days a week to ensure clinical needs are addressed as soon as possible. Check them out at pinegrovecrossing.com or 303-996-8000 and see how care goes into everything they do. 
Welcome back to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz, a candid conversation as we learn about types of dementias, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, frontal temporal, and Lewy body, and their effects on the people we love. Okay, so we're back, and we were talking about uh, the little strange things that we do. Um, what are some other things you do? Do you get up and run in the morning? Do you live near a beach? That's the first thing you do. Do you do yoga? Um, What are these things? And the question is, how then do we document it? So we want to write this stuff down. It doesn't really belong in a will or anything like that. So um, if you want to do something fun, we're in a new world today. We have to think out of the box, right? So Facebook... um, has ways that you can do your story, but that's no good. They they pop off after like a day or something like that. But you can do collages and things like that. You could you could guide people to your Facebook page if you keep it or document all your photos in there. That could be fun. Um, I realized yesterday with my Samsung phone, I have a um, Galaxy Nine tablet. And I realized that I can make a photo book out of it, out of, off of an app I have. You can make a great photo book with uh, an app called Shutterfly. Shutterfly is so easy. You just upload your photos and then you can make the book, plug in your pictures, write your narrative around it and have a wonderful legacy that you can leave for family and friends. And if you do, um, it gives you a chance to add some writing around it and say, this is a picture of me. (laughs) This is how I sleep. I mean, it sounds funny, but it could be important. Um, Then uh, so another thing you could do is get a camera. I've got a camera um, that is a Sony and it's just a little handheld thing that I got at Best Buy. But it's really cool. And I can connect it to my phone and I can sit and do a video. So I can set it up on a tripod and I can move across the room and I can just have my phone right in front of me. And this cool little Sony camera has a uh, flip a, a piece on it where I can I can set the camera up and I can turn it so I can see myself on the camera. And then I can actually uh, connect it to my Samsung phone and turn it on and off. So you can do a video that way. That's a super easy way to do a video. I'm pretty sure iPhones have something similar to that. I can't even imagine why they wouldn't. But it's very, very easy these days to do a video on your phone um, uh, or to do it through a, a really nice Sony camera like the one I was telling you about. And the cool thing is you can upload that to your computer just with a USB cord. And it's super, super easy to use. And just put all that information in uh, some type of a video and share it with your family. You could you could have everybody do it. Oh, I just had a great idea. You could have everybody do it and have a party where everybody shows their little idiosyncrasies. <laughs> I think that'd be crazy fun. I was just telling Brian, my engineer, that I now ask this question, what would you want somebody to know about you if you had Alzheimer's or some type of dementia? And uh, the people in the classes were just beside themselves. They loved this ability to sit and tell people what were the funny things about themselves that they do. Um, And so that'd be a really cool way to do that. Um, You could also go even a little bit further and do sort of a life history. Why not? Say the places you've traveled. Um, Do a little video for your future little ones that are going to be adults someday and wonder who you are. Um, so maybe, maybe just uh, grab that camera and start talking about, hey, these are the places I always wanted to visit. And these are the ones I made it to. These are the ones I went to. This is what I loved about Italy. This is what I loved about, you know, owning my own company. This is what I did. Or, you know, give advice. There was a, a movie with with um, Michael Keaton a few years ago, and it was called My Life, and he recorded his life and even how to walk into a room and shake somebody's hand for his unborn baby because uh, he had cancer in the movie and was going to die. And it's just a cool way to think about 
How could you share your legacy today? We don't think that much about it. We, I, I just don't think we, we cross those roads. We're so living in the moment right now each and every day that we don't think about how are we going to store all this or how are we going to leave it for our youngsters, our children, our grandchildren. And uh, now with putting everything on our phones and so on and so forth, we can share them to the cloud. But would the cloud be available when our kids are grown? I mean, like, think about that for a minute. Um, so the little things we do could be lost, and the information you want people to know about you could be lost. Shoot, when I was growing up, we had eight-track tapes and little cassette tapes you would put into a cassette player. I don't even think they make those anymore. Like, they're gone. I never thought that the new technology of compact, compact disc CDs would go away. Now it's going away. Back in the day, we had blockbusters everywhere. Now I think there's only one still left in the whole nation. I saw it on 60 Minutes the other day. Um, so we're not even using uh, VHS movies anymore. We're using disc or we're just on Netflix. So, so the way that we're trying to save things, um, if you don't get something down on video, you don't log it somewhere and even keep the uh, apparatus that plays it, your kids may not be able to see it later. I hadn't even really thought about that till right now. <laughs> oh, my God. The world is moving too fast, too fast, too fast. And we really think that, gosh, we're not going to forget anything. We're not going to be in a place where somebody's going to need to know anything about me. We think we're invincible when we're young. But the truth of the matter is that we're getting more and more people, hundreds of thousands of people who are developing Alzheimer's early. This isn't actually a new thing. It's new to you as a listener. But back uh, prior to uh, 1960, from 1904 to 1960, we always thought it was only young people that had this disease. And still to this day, I meet people all the time that say, my grandfather had it or so-and-so had it. I can tell you right now, I could name off 50 people who are my clients that are under the age of 50. So if you think you're invincible, if you think that all is well, think again, because I'm telling you, once it happens, it goes fast. Your metabolism, the younger you are, pushes beta amyloid and tau protein through your body faster than we ever thought. And people who are under the age of 20 who get it typically last nine months to a year. People that get it from like 30 to 40 typically last a year and a half to two. If you're 40, you might last 40 to 50. You might last somewhere between four and seven years. So that doesn't give you a lot of time when you're panicking and you're already diagnosed. You're already having cognitive problems. You're already having memory loss and it's going really, really fast. So think about how could you make uh, some type of video, a scrapbook, um, you know, for you old school fo folks, just make a scrapbook. Um, draw pictures with your kids uh, that, that could be fun that you could put into that. Um, the things that you did with the people you love, the things that you want to remember. Was it your garden? Was it um, a ball game that you went to? Was it pitch and catch with your son? Was it um, playing princess with your daughter? What do you want to remember? And how are you going to take the time to document it and make sure it's not forgotten? Uh, about five or six years ago, I was at the walk. That was, in fact, I think it was the walk that I broke my foot that I referenced earlier to end Alzheimer's. And a child came up to do his little video. And as he was waiting in line, I walked over to talk to him because he was just a, an adorable child and he was talking a mile a minute to people and I thought he was very articulate. So I asked him why he was there. And he said, I think, um, how did he say it? I think my grandma has lost all her souvenirs. That's what he said. She's lost all her souvenirs. So out of the mouth of babes, right? Um, he was thinking of her memories as souvenirs that we would collect 
And in his mind, she had lost all of her souvenirs that she had saved. That's how he thought about it. And I, I've thought about that so many times over the years thinking, what a cool way to think about that. Um, hey, another way you could record, if everybody in the world is on a TV show these days, American Idol or The Voice or the new songwriter thing, make a song. Write a song. Go into a studio or or buy a, a microphone or something and record or just sing into your computer. The whole world does that. Um, and write a song for somebody about your life. So just the, the point of today's show was really we all have things that we hold precious in our hearts and in our minds, our memories that we want to hang on to, our memories that we want to share. We all have weird little quirky things about us that um, the whole world doesn't know. We look like we're all put together when we walk out our door. But the truth of the matter is we eat food a certain way. Ah, Here's one of those weird things. There are people who don't let their food touch. They will not let their food touch on their plate. (laughs) I'm one of those people that mixes it all together. I tell you what, I could have... Mashed potatoes, don't give me gravy. I will put baked beans on it. I will put corn on it. Um, I mix my baked beans and my macaroni and cheese, and I like it that way. But there are people who do not, you know? So so all these little things, think about it for yourself. When you're done listening to this show, write a list of the things you want to remember the way and the way you want to record it. And make sure you start doing it now because I'm telling you, as you get a little older, by the time you hit 40, you start losing some of your regular memory. Okay, that's just how it is. It's just normal aging. By the time you hit 50, you've lost about a quarter of your memories. So if you think about that, depending on where you are in this in this game, it could go sooner than you think. Okay, so... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to just think about it, have a good laugh about it, and look at the things you do throughout your day. Uh, You're going to write them down. You could do a video and share it with all your friends, have a party. It's a great excuse to have a party. I love to have parties. I think I'm going to have one just like that just because because I thought of it. And um, make a scrapbook, make a video, sing a song, do whatever you need to do. Just don't waste time thinking You have time because you may not. Okay? So, all right, folks. I always try and give you some good things to think about. I think this could be a fun one. It's a good thing to share with your girlfriends. It's a good thing to share with your guy friends. I don't know if guys do that or not, but girls do. (laughs) And I hope you come back and listen next week because I always have interesting people to talk to and interesting resources to give you and hopefully good conversation pieces that will stimulate your mind. Until then, take care and I'll see you next week on Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. Living and working with Alzheimer's and other dementias can often be challenging. Summit Resilience Training provides education utilizing non-medical approaches for those who work with our friends affected by dementia. Believing families still need one-on-one assistance, we provide classes which help them understand the diseases affecting their loved ones, offering strategies and techniques for success with activities of daily living and working with confusing behaviors. We offer in-home assessments to clarify symptoms of dementia diseases and help families work together to find moments of joy while living with memory loss and impairment. Education programs instilling person-centered care philosophies are offered for professional caregivers working in communities and homes, which can be customized for their staff. Training is also available for first responders, such as law enforcement, fire, and EMT personnel. We are passionate that people with dementias, such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and others, are approached with compassion and understanding, and those who work with them have all the tools they need for success. Call us at Summit Resilience Training, 303-420-6988 to schedule a class or in-home assessment. Visit our website at summitresiliencetraining.com for more information. You've been listening to Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz. To learn more about her resources, services, classes, or to book speaking engagements, 
visit Jill's website at summitresiliencetraining.com. A new podcast drops every Tuesday, so join us as we learn more about dementias, resilience, and overcoming obstacles to find a positive outcome. Dementia Resilience with Jill Lorenz can be found on your favorite podcast provider. Please subscribe and give us a five-star rating. Musical and technical support provided by Brian Hunter. See you next week.